Gnolan is a smart contract platform built on GNOL, an interpreted and fully deterministic variant of Go. This unique setup allows different programs to interact with each other safely, even if they aren't necessarily trustworthy, while handling memory and processing limits. By ensuring consistent behavior, Gnoland offers robust language level interoperability and composability. This makes it capable of supporting a wide range of use cases. But right now, our first lofty goal is to transform how we communicate online. I'm Morgan. I work in the GNOME core team. I work on the GNOME VM. Um, I help make sure that uh, the programs we build in GNOME all run successfully on uh, the blockchain and uh, don't crash and burn. And um, aside from that, I like to have a lot of fun with programming. I like to, you know, I like to write code. I like to enjoy nature. I like to, <laughs> but yeah, on the team I work. I work primarily. Uh, you know, on the programming language and on helping make good decisions about GNOME. Okay, so to somebody who asks me why we're building GNOME, I would essentially say that there's three different problems that we're trying to address with GNOME with GNO and GNOLAND. One of the most important parts is about the, what, I, what I call the social problem. What I mean by that is that if you look at the internet today and over the past few years, you see that there were like some very big platforms on which people were talking and using the internet to communicate with each other. I'm talking about Facebook, I'm talking about Twitter, but I'm talking also about platforms like uh, what used to be the forums of the internet, I'm talking about Reddit. There needs to be a way to communicate which is not censored and where you know humans can come and talk together and use the platform as a shared good rather than being a platform where you have to essentially sign up to the rules that somebody else wrote for you and just you know give up on any any kind of way to kind of build a platform collectively and build a platform for the people who are using it that is kind of the problem that we're trying to solve with GNO. What we want to build is sort of like scaffolding. So a base layer would allow you to use it to build the centralized version of Twitter, the centralized version of a classical uh, messaging board. So one of the key components there was uh, how do you handle moderation uh, on such a project? It makes sense to have, you know, moderation happen as something on chain also because we won't have you know the single front end on GNO web we'll likely have mobile applications as well um, and you know we want we still want the moderation to be something that is decentralized and probably something which is not you know directly community managed uh, like a, you know popular vote but more something which is um, you know DAO managed and the reason like you know that uh, censorship resistant and a DAO managing it and you know sort of deciding what's good content and what's not it could co coexist is a forkability aspect right if the DAO is making a terrible job in moderating the content according to you know its per its its, gui its per guidelines the the board the boards can be forked into something else like one question that we should answer is uh, what is what it, you know is to have a constitution and to ask the question of what are the transaction types or the things that we won't censor and what are the things that we would? Yeah. Violence. Uh, encouraging violence? No, discouraging. Right, so, so like censoring mm. realms that are encouraging violence. Yeah. Yeah? Where's the line there? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's a fine one. Because, because there's memes and people are just, mm. you know, taking the piss a little bit and then there's actual intent. You know, where to draw the line between yeah. jokes, dark humor, right. and actual intent of a call to violence, an, an, an illegal call to violence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to ban stuff, then you have to draw the line. Another 
utopia or things I expect for GNO is to have people who sadly depend on decentralization, who can start not only sending money when the bank is blocking their accounts in a, in a country with wars, for instance, but also to help them organize themselves for the rest of the, of the thing in the life. So, or to organize as a, as a community, as a city, as a country who cannot use the central service anymore. So probably at some point, one of the country under di dictatorship or war will start using or building stuff on GNO to, to organize as themselves. In order to build these though, we need to solve the second fundamental problem, which is the technological problem. There's essentially two reasons why you would, you would need to use a programming language that's, uh, that's very similar to Go for, for smart contracting. One of the reasons, like one of the main reasons is the Nolan ecosystem in itself. One of the main ethos that we have is a complete and utter adherence to transparency. So we want to keep everything transparent, source code transparent, blockchain logic transparent. Where you're actually like executing, where you're actually running, you can actually see the code, you can read the code. But for you to be able to uh, trust the code, you need to understand what you're actually running. And this is where kind of Go simplicity comes in. Um, that's like one of the reasons why you wouldn't choose a language like Rust for, you know, something that, that should be easily readable, easily understandable. The, the second reason, like one of the biggest reasons is Go is super easy to learn. It's very sim similar to like regular English. It's just natural and it allows you to build, you know, much more complex systems that don't rely on you know, complicated proxies or upgrade patterns or something like that, where you need like a, like a manual to actually understand how to do. You can be a JavaScript programmer and pretty soon you can start writing Solidity code. It's not good Solidity code, it's not secure at all, but you can start writing it. And so, you know, a lot of Ethereum uh, contracts have been written with that kind of background people are able to get away with being paid Solidity developers for months or years before they really start to notice all the, the subtle challenges coming from that background and really um, writing code that is uh, resistant and robust and ready for high low, highly adversarial environments like uh, DeFi platforms. GNO is a chance to kind of reboot things. Um, being a fork of Go, Go is really a fantastic language from a security perspective because it's all about writing code that is highly readable to humans and very straightforward. There's not a lot of subtleties. Yeah, so I were working here in a new API for the indexer. Uh, we were using GraphQL, but the filters that we have, they were quite uh, not good for all the use cases. So I'm basically implementing a SQL-like uh, filter system that is able to filter by anything that you want to, to filter on. Basically, the indexer is uh, getting all the information from the blockchain. The no lamp, in this case, is, is test four. And we can do things like this, like give me all the files that contains this import. So you can check all the files that contains this, that, that they are like creating a proposal or we can get all the registered users and this is opening the door for a ton of different use cases. When you think about the land, you just have to reach the, the website and you can bounce uh, all the realm that is on Gnoland. But since the format of, of uh, Gnoland and the uh, realm are pretty simple, it's only markdown, you can imagine develop a number of tools and for example Gnobro which is basically uh, a browser for the terminal. Gnobro is quite simple, actually, the interpret is a markdown from any real. Um, it generates this uh, web page, so you can bounce your real very quickly live on your terminal. <laughs> so yeah, it was a fun project, not really useful, but it's cool to showcase, because it's show like how you can uh, you can interpret uh, what Realm can give you. So you can even imagine the same thing on mobile or any other platform, actually. We're really trying to build an ecosystem for the, for the GNOME programming language. We don't see GNOLAND as being the ultimate chain that can, that, that can sort of solve all the problems and be perfect for any use case. So we see in the long term, other chain using GNO to sort of develop the smart contracts but still relying on Glowland as the primary source for good smart contracts, 
and good packages to build and compose very, very good applications. And that, that finishes our technical problem. There is one final problem that we're trying to solve, which is the, the incentives problem. What we're trying to change with Gnoland is how the governance of the chain works. So rather than being oriented towards the people who have the largest stakes in the project, to be oriented to the people who have actually built the project and are aligned with the ideas and the philosophies of how to build it. There are still some questions around tokenomics and how the governance DAO will work. It's one of the reasons that we're here because we also have all the major leaders on the project in the room so we can uh, squeeze all the questions that we need from them. We should have a conversation about GovDAO and we're going to essentially bombard Jay with questions about what he kind of wants to do as he's been working on, sp on the specifications for it for a while. Okay, so uh, this is a draft. It's a draft um, spec into works for GovDAO. Uh, and, uh, and we can modify it from here. Uh, it's a simplification and sort of a blend of ideas that we've been discussing. Um, and there's still a lot to figure out, but uh, let's just go through it. Um, and, and you can ask questions at any time, so let's make this interactive. The document is about this. So GovDAO is the DAO who owns Gnoland. It's a DAO who will have full control on all the security things of a blockchain. So in other words, it's the consensus mechanism. It's not the validator part, it's, but it, it, it's what will decide who can be a validator, who should be promoted, how to, how to distribute the gas rewards, um, how to punish bad actions, how to promote good actions. And yeah, in practice, GovDAO is definitely what will replace the, what, what make proof of stake proof of stake, or proof of work proof of work, allowing us to have a very secure blockchain without having um, yeah, proof of work, proof of stake, but GovDAO instead. So we want to incentivize the builders, the people who have actually come together and helped build Gnoland, its smart contracts, its ecosystem, and uh, agreed to the fundamental principles of it, rather than just being the people who have poured in the most money into it. Noland as a smart contract platform can actually be used for a wide variety of, of use cases. So for example, the DeFi space, Gnoland can be an absolute game changer. Just obviously community works are just a step right now for us, uh, which is interesting and it's an opportunity for us to learn and build and just demonstrate Gnoland's potential on, on this one specific use case. I wouldn't say that Gnoland is a resistance, but I think now more than ever it's important for us uh, to exist. I grew up in uh, socialist Yugoslavia. You only had one source of information, so it was very hard to find something that challenges it. And my hope within the internet was that uh, you would have more balanced sources of information, but it turns out that it opened up a whole new can of worms where misinformation is weaponized and we're being bombarded by propaganda, essentially. In the recent uh, situation on the social media, we saw that uh, just a change of leadership in a single social media platform can completely reverse the information on that platform. And it's not necessarily for the better. So having a decentralized media actually opens up a space that's safe for somebody to express their opinion. You may not like it, you may not care about it, but you can no longer snuff it out just because you own that platform. And that's why I think Noland now more than ever is important uh, for the people of this world. <laughs>